This video is brought to you by patreon.com slash worst take. Get access to exclusive live streams and discord servers, on-screen shout outs, and early access to some videos when you join now. Help make sure that we can continue to make content like this by supporting the Patreon. Links are in the description down below. See, the easy film breakdowns to do, the easy ones to watch are the ones where you know there's just going to be a ton of success left and right. But those can be the least informative at times because when you are having success, it's usually up to a bunch of different variables that lead to that. And it's easy to isolate one variable and say, this is why this is happening when it's a confluence of variables. But what we're going to look at today is the exact opposite. There are issues with this offense. There are issues with that DTR had that are specific to him. And there are issues that aren't so specific to DTR. Um, I'm just going to say it right now. The offensive line play was so bad in this game that it's going to get its own film breakdown. So if you're wondering why I'm not bringing up the offensive line as much as you want me to, it's because there's a whole nother video coming out about um, the offensive line play and quite frankly, how lackluster it was all game. Um, but let's get started. We're going to start with the number one issue, right? I talked about this before. Part of the problem on offense without Nick Chubb is that nobody has gravity. Look, they're going to try to run this orbit screen. Well, they're going to try to run this orbit fake with Elijah Moore. And I want you to watch just how little the other team actually cares. Oh, yeah, that's why. Okay, so they're going to try to run an orbit fake to try to move some guys on defense. And we saw this work earlier in the season. But look how little Baltimore cares about this damn orbit screen that they're they're trying to fake. Right? You're going to see Elijah Moore come into motion. He does the orbit, and look, nobody cares. Now, again, you might be in zone, but that tells you, okay, that's what you're in. Nobody cares, and it doesn't matter. Actually, you get a penalty because DTR snaps the ball while Elijah Moore is still in motion. Yep, can't do that. <sighs> so, one, you, you have nobody who's forcing gravity. And that's one problem, right? Second thing here is I think this is a good throw by DTR. Not going not gonna to be all bad. I think he does a great job seeing that the middle field opens. They try to show him a two shell. and It turns into a one high look. He knows that David Njoku has this route. He has a one-on-one -on -one look here. Fit it into that ain't window. Good job. Good throw. Good yard at the catch. So that's good. Here's the thing, though. He has to learn his limitations. I don't know how the coaching staff doesn't know his limitations, but the guy has limitations, and they consistently call it this play. And part of me wants to say, hey, DTR, you know you can't fit that window. But this is where the play is designed to go, right? This is a slant. This is the look that they want. I mean, this is what they want here, right? They want this throw for DTR to go exactly where it went and he's just not capable of it right now we can see here what they want is to throw into this window right they want to throw it in this window it's a play you see Deshaun make all the time it's a play you've seen even Baker Mayfield make all the time um, it's a play that you've seen in this offense it's a play you see in the NFL all the time uh, but it's not necessarily a play you see a lot of rookie quarterbacks making unless they're like, you know, top first round picks, right? They have, unless they have that unbelievable arm strength coming out of college. It's not something you see a lot of fifth round rookies throwing. I mean, like you don't even see Brock Purdy running this. But, you know, it's slant in the middle. He's supposed to see, hey, look, it, it, is Roquan going to be flat footed? And Roquan does a great job getting good depth here um, on the route. And it's not there, but there's no way that DTR has enough experience under his belt to know that it's not there. And it almost gets picked off. 
I just don't know why we're calling it, but. Because the problem here isn't necessarily the problem here is that this is not a read of open field read that you would expect a rookie quarterback to be able to make. This is just way too complicated. You're asking him to read the death on the linebacker. And then to beat the linebacker to the spot with the ball. Now we go back in this play. We can see that there are easier options available, but the progressions are the progressions. Unless he changed the progressions before the game, you know, they're going to stay the same. So you just can't call this play, right? Like, you know, he's not going to know right here that Roquan is actually in a good position because in college, if a linebacker's like that, you throw it. In the preseason, if a linebacker's like that, you throw it. In the NFL, if a linebacker's like that, and it's it's you know one of the better linebackers in the NFL, I think he's a Pro Bowl caliber guy. You don't throw that. But it's like, why? Why is he having to make these decisions? Yeah, it's a fine call if you have to shine in the game, but no to shine. Yeah, you, you gotta, you you just can't trust him to make that read. Right here, the protection doesn't hold up. Jed and Dewan get beat, but even if they don't get beat, this is just a tough axe. Like, what are you what are you axing of DTR right here? Now again, to the obvious thing here. No, this isn't the play, but the obvious thing here is that Jed and Dewan do get beat, like. Jet gets beat inside. Dewan gets beat like right off the line of scrimmage. I mean, they didn't hold up. So that's the most obvious thing, right? Jed, Jed actually, he gets beat late, but Dewan gets beat immediately. You can see 79, he's trailing. He gets beat immediately. Doesn't even get a good, do a good job of making him run that arc. He just gets beat. All right, so that happens. But <laughs> the throw you're asking him to make, man, even if he's not there, is, is this deep end. And you're asking him to throw into this window. Now, again, that window's there, right? These guys are deep. He's playing shallow. Like, you have the window technically. And if this were to shine in the game, I would be 100% fine with that window being the expectation. But with DTR in the game, there has to be an adjustment to say, hey, look, we're gonna flip the we're gonna flip the progressions on this play. And instead of it being wait for one, then two, then check, right? You need to flip the progressions to be, hey, one, two, check. Okay? Like See if you have him. If you have him, we'll just take the free money, right? Just take that. And especially when you know you're going to get like this deep. This is even deep quarter, but this is just super deep coverage here where nobody's even remotely near the, the 50 yard line. So, I mean, like these aren't crazy adjustments. I, I think that are being asked for. Right. Like this isn't changed to completely, completely change the game plan, which I think some people think, hell, he was supposed to come in there with a new playbook. And even I was like, hey, what do you want him to do? change the playbook? Because the quarterback last minute couldn't play. Um, but you do need to switch up these progressions. Right. Like he this can't be where his eyes are initially. Like he has to switch it here. And like in general, they have these progressions in their playbook. For the passing game, at least. Well, then, of course, because it's progressions. But they have these play calls in there. And a lot of it requires your offensive line to block for three, three and a half seconds in order for this thing to open up. And it just, it, it's too long. This team does not have that kind of time. You know, I think it just, 
in general, they would do better to have less of these type progressions in the game. And again, look, you could point to this and say, he's there. All the offensive line has to do is block his guy and and he's there and that's an open throw and that's technically correct. Right? I've I've been there. It's technically correct. But the problem is that one, the throw you're asking DTR to make is not a throw that you should expect him to make. And two, the progression takes way too long to develop. It just does. Because in order to hit this, I mean, he's not even at a point here where he gets disrupted to where this is a possibility, right? Now, he does a good job escaping out here and still finding that window. So good on DTR for that. But you know this offensive line has been vulnerable to pressure all year. Just get the damn ball to David. And this isn't on DTR. This is on Kevin, right? Because, again, this isn't about where DTR's eyes are. His eyes are where they're supposed to be. The progression here is clearly one two check. By the time he gets disrupted, this is not an option anymore. But maybe instead of a five-step drop, because you see here, this is a five-step drop. Maybe this just needs to be a three and a hitch out to Njoku. Right? These are quick adjustments. Hey, on this play, we're going to do a three-step and a hitch out to Njoku. Right? So instead of you having to take these extra two steps and walking right into that arc, you know, let's do a three-step here. One, two, three. And then look for Njoku. If you see him there, take it. If you don't, take the check. Simplify the game for the rookie. And also simplify the game for your offensive line. Like, help him out. You can't just give him five-step drops. <sighs> now, again, good job recovering, trying to make a play. And he does a nice job of getting that ball out to Elijah Moore. Elijah Moore, you would like him to hang on to that. But, you yeah. It's just more or less what I'm seeing is the problem is like. All right, here. I have a real question on what are some of the keys in this offense. And when I say keys, I mean like for a quarterback or running back, what are the indicators that you should go in certain directions, right? Every offense has them. That's why they call the keys. And like, we've seen this get thrown multiple times, but well, this isn't the play, but we'll see. There's like a play action boot end around or a deep ball here where they have like a trick play. I believe it's here. Yeah. So, they do this and they have this little end around weird little throw here. And I'm just wondering what the hell are the keys? Because it's one thing for DTR to throw this into quad coverage. <laughs> um, and look, we can all look at that in, in a vacuum and say, that's a bad decision. That's on DTR. And that's fair. You can't look at that in a vacuum. My issue is that this is not the first time I've seen a Browns quarterback this year throw into triple coverage. It's like the fifth time on these on these kind of reads. And it's not just been DTR, it's been Deshaun too. And you would think Deshaun knows better. So what are the keys? Like at this point, you have to look at the offensive keys. Like what what is telling him, what is indicating to him that that deep cross is going to be there? Are they just throwing it because they want to throw it? Is that the problem in the quarterback room? Or are the keys the problem? There's something funky here because it keeps getting thrown. It should not keep getting thrown, right? Again, you can see here, and it's in the cross here, and there's no way there's any indicators that this is going to be open. You have a deep safety here. You have an underneath safety here. You have a follow safety here, and this dude's on Donovan Peoples-Jones like glue. There's no separation. You have four on two. So are the quarterbacks just being impatient, which is a legitimate thing that can happen because when you get an opportunity to get these deep shots, guys usually want to take them. I understand that. 
Um, and maybe it's impatience. That might be as simple as that. Or is it a key that they're supposed to read here that just is that sucks um, because this is happening far too often? So, you know, the quarterback coach, that's going to be a problem he has to fix because the keys are funky or the mindset is terrible. But we, I'm tired of seeing the quarterback, whoever it is, throwing a quad coverage because, oh, my God, we finally get to throw a deep ball. Like, and it's not like they only th- – they throw so many deep balls in this offense. So, like, why are we so thirsty to throw that one? I don't know. Oh, by the way, if you want something fun to get mad at, like Donovan Peoples-Jones just quits his route here. <laughs> Dude, well, watch this. He's on the – Kyle Hamilton's on him. He just decides, hey, I'm good. Yeah, I'm done. I'm done. Ball, ball ain't out yet. Ball's there. Yep. Yeah, I mean, it, just a little bit of disinterest on this offense, man. It's not good. All right. <laughs> What's here? Okay, I think this is a bad choice by DTR. Yep. Yep, 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 yep. Bad choice. Bad, bad, bad choice. Now, what happened here? Did the defense confuse him? Yeah, and this one I don't think is the play call. This is just a terrible decision by DTR. All right, too high. You get him in motion. You have Amari Cooper stack. And he's going to run this post. But again, the key that the, you got to read the field here if you're DTR, right? Eyes are here. You can't throw this knowing that that linebacker's there. If that linebacker crashed on more, then you can go here. If that linebacker were playing higher or closer to the other hash you can throw that ball but that linebacker is in position so you cannot throw that this corner is in position he's not outside leverage none of that like it's in position so once you see that and honestly once you see what looks like to be you know a pretty basic under look you know that this is probably not going to be open, but this might. All right. So the concept here is to read what's going on. And they're trying to put guys in conflict. You know, hey, if you get this corner to follow Coop, that's going to open up this area. And that's where the ball should go. So I think that this should be one of the keys. This should be one of the keys. And this should be one of the keys. These are your, this This is the triangle, right? That you're looking at if you're DTR. I don't think he had his eyes in the right place uh, when it comes to f- figuring out where this defense was. You don't need to read the whole defense. You just need to read what's here. This is the triangle, right? So, it, it, for example, if this were, for this to get the green light, right? This little post, for that to get the green light, you would need to see this triangle shift this way, this guy shifting this way, covering hard flat. And then you would need to see this guy about to be over here, probably in like a three look, right? Now, if you get that, this is open. They didn't get that. What you got here was squat, 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 which meant this is open. Once he carries the second he carried Coop is the second he should have thrown that out. And I don't think deep DTR just wasn't patient enough to watch this, to watch this happen. Cause you can see he's already ready to throw on the break. And he need to see what was going to happen with that instead of throw early, right? There's times for anticipation. There's times to, to wait and see. And he didn't wait long enough. But that out would have been there. That's a misread. And that's a pick. Should have been 10. Ends up being 7 other way. 
Not good. Okay, this is the infamous end around. And look, I don't know what the hell the keys are, but I know for a fact that this run play is clearly designed to go down this alley. It is obvious that that's what this run play is supposed to do. You know what this run play is 100% not designed for? Doing this, doing this, doing this. That's not the play. I promise you that's not the play call. The play call is obviously right here. Look at all the orange pants. You, you want to see on a run play where the design is. Just look for one, two, three, four, five. All five, what, five tight ends and offensive linemen are in this alley trying to seal it up. So you have this alley. And you have this alley. How the hell is he over here and not cutting up? Now, again, it might be an issue with the handoff. It might be an issue with design. Like, mm, I don't know. Maybe the offensive line didn't get, didn't get, didn't get enough push on it. But there's no way he's supposed to do this. <laughs> like, there's just take the hit, man. Again, it wasn't gonna bust for much because I think 58 Brandon Williams does a good job here of swimming over Ethan Posick to close that gap. But this cut right here, dog, like what is you what are you thinking? Just take the hit. Just take the hit. Well, what is this? Yeah, it's obvious where this play call was supposed to go. Come on, man. Come on. He's supposed to be following 53. He ain't following 53. And honestly, if he follows 53, he might get there in time. But whatever reason, he's looking at this and he doesn't want it. Because if he wanted it, he'd get downhill right now. He doesn't get downhill or he doesn't act like he wants to get downhill till right here. And if he can't see it fast enough, he just doesn't need to be on these. And the only reason I'm, I'm asking what are the keys here to intimate that it might be a offensive structure problems because we saw the same thing happen with Anthony Schwartz. Now, it might just be the same problem with Anthony Schwartz. He don't want to take the hit. Hey, goodness. I mean, none of that's good. Um, I see the genius on this pitch attempt. I really do, DTR. I see the plan, right? Because, you know, you, you can see a world where you pitch this thing out to Harrison Bryant. He catches it and goes up. But again, this ain't this ain't Chip Kelly offense no more, man. You can't do shit like this. Because that linebacker is probably going to tackle Harrison Bryant or you're going to get that thing fumbled or picked off. Just, just, can we not, man? Just, why are we so reckless with the football? It's like the quarterback room has to figure that out because it ain't just been DTR. Right here, I have no idea if the depth's wrong, but something's clearly wrong here because he takes a zero drop, so no steps in this drop, and throws this thing immediately. But Jerome Ford's not even close to getting out of his break. Maybe it was supposed to be a curl, and he just missed. He just didn't throw it right. I think that's supposed to be an out that – uh. Jerome for I don't know. That's just this is shitty execution. Right here. This is a good throw here to David and Joku. But again, I think Baltimore confused him. This looks like six. Right? Three on one side. Yeah, this looks like he's playing a three technique. Well, not three technique. He's playing a Cover three, like he's deep, deep blue for those who play man. And then you get man on man here, and you're probably gonna get like a rotation over, over, and then flat, flat, flat. You know, that's what it looks like. So maybe it's like a cover six, but they confuse him. He reads this as cover two because if he saw that it was six, and again, you gotta read your keys. I don't know if he read him. 
Um, and I don't know what the keys are. It's a big question here because the eyes aren't in the right place a lot of times with these quarterbacks. And you have to ask yourself, is it the keys or is it the quarterbacks? All right. So he throws that to David. And he throws to the two side of this. So he's not 100% wrong because, again, it looks like six. Definitely looks like six. But if he would have had his eyes on 23, realized what 23 was doing here, he would have seen this out open up. And that would have been a much better, easier play, easier throw for him. But again, like, are we? this is a tough read to ask a rookie quarterback to make, man. It's it's a tough read. <sighs> yeah, this one's here. Good call. I think Elijah Moore's open here. And that's easy for a first down. It's a good, easy throw. Good call there. Way to scheme up a first down for Kevin, if you want to use that terminology. But Dewan Jones, for whatever reason, you know, he's... They slit this protection to the completely wrong side of the field, and I just don't know how that happens. I mean, like, they do a good job dropping guys out in coverage. They just completely fool them. And it it makes me wonder, because, look, you see these two guys that go back out in coverage and everything. But it makes me wonder, who was in charge of protections? And did DTR have the same control over protections that Deshaun has? Because, like, again, yeah, it's on DTR. He should have made the protection call. But, like, goodness gracious, it's a rookie quarterback. There's no way he should be in charge of protections. There's really no way that should happen. So, like, even if it's DTR's fault, it's inexcusable that it's up to him. Yeah, because somebody, this line, the protection is to shift, whatever it is. And that means that since it's a shift, since the line's shifting over, right? And I can see how this can happen. You know, they got, what, six guys on the line of scrimmage. And they're betting on this half to go. So they're going to slide this way. And they were wrong. But who's in charge of making that call? I don't know. I hope it's not the quarterback. But it costs you a first down here. Hey, man, like we could talk about, oh, well, the routes are open. These are open. And I've done this before. But also it matters that the protection's right. It also matters if the eyes are in the right place. And that's all structured the offense type stuff. You know what I mean? So you can't just circle guys who are open at the top of the drop and say, hey, look, you know, Kevin's doing his job well. Um, this is a game where I think Kevin has failed the team as much as anybody, to be honest with you. Like, he had just as bad of a game as a DTR did. Or it's not really, honestly, it's more AV, it's AVP and Kevin. Like, let me not let AVP escape here because whenever you're critical of Kevin, people will run to AVP as if he's going to fix it. No, these are things that they're both in charge of. The quarterback coach, the offensive line coach, AVP, Kevin Stefanski. It was a bad game for every single one of them. There's inexcusable mistakes that come from the keys. That's the quarterback room usually. There's inexcusable mistakes. I mean, the offensive line was terrible. I don't think that this is a banner day for Bill Callahan. Um, and there's things with with the uh, protections and the design of some of these plays that aren't great. And that's on Kevin and AVP because they draw these things up. Wasn't a banner day for the offensive staff. Great fake here by DTR. And he gets it out there and able to get some yards there. Good job by him. All right, I want y'all to see something. Who's open? Right, we want to play the who's open game. Who's open right now? Who's open? Wide receivers aren't getting any separation. That's another problem. Elijah Moore not getting separation. David Njoku not getting separation. Coop not getting consistent separation. This one again, I, I think this is on the play caller. Right. This isn't really straw flawed play design. It's just flawed play calling right here. Why would you continue to call this deep cross this deep post when you know he can't throw it? Like, why are we continuing to put him in that position to throw these plurals that he can't throw? I really don't know why. I'm I'm really confused 
on, on what, what's going on here. This one again is like, well, what? <sighs> this one again, I think this is more on DTR than the coaches, right? I can't blame him because, again, it's kind of what I talked about here is just switching up the progressions instead of going what usually would be one, two, since you're in the end zone. You want to go one, two here, which makes sense. High, low. It looks like he takes the wrong guy, but I don't mind just getting the hell out of there. So actually, that's fine. I, I don't mind that from a play calling standpoint. I don't mind it from an offensive court. Like, I don't mind it from any standpoint. It's a fine design. That's fine. Um, I take back my negative on that one. <laughs> And then this right here, I just don't know. I don't, again, man, he's waiting for something to break deep, but he's in the back of the end. Like, why is the progression still this? You know what you're going to get here. The goal should be get the hell out the end zone. And look where DTR's eyes are. Now, assuming that DTR is not completely incompetent and that his eyes are in the right spot, even though it's hard to believe that his eyes would be on the single side of a trips formation. But that's where his eyes are. For whatever reason, his eyes are locked here. Where there's not numbers. I, I just maybe this is a this this looks like a rookie mistake, to be honest with you. Because there's no way the eyes should be here. That's that's five on one, man. That's that's just not good. Look, look, pre-snap. I mean, the numbers are 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 the numbers right here. The numbers are the numbers. They're, they're, they're even pre-snap. These are this is still five on one. I don't know how he got here. Maybe he was just panicking at this point. Like a hey, maybe like why he didn't even watch the middle of the field to see if these two moved over to that way. It was just like locked on to that side. I don't know. This is just this is a rough one. This is a rough one, but there, there there's clearly problems in this offense that they need to they need to figure out. You know what I mean? Because also, I just don't love this design in this situation. Right? You have the two outs after a chip block because you're trying to go deep downfield, right? So these guys are open, but the, because you're trying to go deep downfield, they're really trying to get this first down for whatever reason. Um, and then you have this in. It just, it's not favorable. You're only sending three deep there. Um, and then you're making your quarterback hold on to the ball when he's inexperienced and nobody's really getting that much separation. Like you're, you're basically asking for a safety on this one. Like, I just don't love this. I really don't love this. I don't like this at all. You know, we haven't seen one RPO this game. All right. Right here. Yeah, this is just a baffling throw. I mean, not even close to the neighborhood of where this is supposed to be. I know it looks like he gets hit, but he releases this thing. Look, he releases this and follows through before he gets touched. So that, that's not to blame. Like, kudos for standing in the pocket and throwing it. But, I mean, like, he just closed his eyes and threw this shit. He got picked off. And ended the game. So what do we take away from this? One, this offense has problems. Um, consistently, whether it's Deshaun or not, eyes aren't in the right place. Consistently, keys are funky. Uh, consistently in the run game, keys are funky. Things either are too complicated or they are just flat wrong. Need to use the bye week to adjust that. The good news is that that's fixable in the bye week, right? As negative as I sound in this video, all this stuff is fixable in the bye week. Um, uh, RPO presence, non-existent. This is non-existent RPO presence. Um, screen game, just non-existent in this one. And probably for good reason. Baltimore wasn't blitzing that much. So you just aren't going to get that many screens to them when they're just sending four or five. You know, it's going to get cleaned up pretty well. But, you know, it's just, 
it, there is a constant question of like, hey, are the eyes not in the right place because the quarterback is not making the right reads or because the offense has keys that just are not good indicators for these quarterbacks? It's a question they need to answer, man. It's a question they need to answer. We'll see. We'll see what it looks like with the shine out there. It looked a lot better the week before, uh, but this week wasn't a good week. It wasn't a good week. It just wasn't. Um, but let me know what you think in the comment section down below. Y'all have a great day. Have you better now.